so while you are looking at it, it feels like at 3 am 2 am it feels so majestic that maybe you have died you are in paradise and something something is happening there there is oh, no no voice utter silence from unboxing stories this is himalayan diaries i'm your host ojas in our first episode we had an enriching conversation with chartered accountant turned trek leader rahul paul we explored his unique journey into becoming trek leader and delved into heartwarming experience of taking his mother on a trek today we pick up where we left off we'll dive deeper into rahul's favorite trek and unpack more of his fascinating experiences what what are your uh, favorite trek some of your favorite treks or the trek that you like the most so there is one trek uh, with the name of goe chala it's in sikkim west sikkim and one of the reason i will tell you why it is one of the favorite trek it's it's a difficult trek and a uh, eight day trek total total eight days hota hai usme one of the reason is you can witness mount kanchenjunga which is the third highest peak of entire world and the view point majorly see it is visible from many places if you go to darjeeling also uh, it will be visible but the visibility of it is like magnificent when you are standing at view point 1 uh, there is a long walk long summit summit day can you walk us through right from the first base camp to the summit how the trek looks like from your perspective imagine you are going on a trek imagine you are going to goechala how does the first day start how is the second day and how we reach the peak goechala as i told it's a eight day trek and a difficult one so in that uh, first of all you reach the yaksam base camp every trek is a base camp from your trek starts and one of the peculiar aspect of this trek is you get a lot of cultural value uh, so many of the treks uh, you will not find the cultural value of uh, living with particular uh, community or uh, seeing how they talk what they eat what they wear all of those things but here right from the beginning from the yaksam only you start witnessing all those lifestyle and it feels very warming before the long trek because uh, practically every day you have a long walk and you are entering into the into the area of the wilderness you are going till the 15000 feet the first day when when it starts you go through the particular forest section forest section and it's an ascent proper ascent there are bridges also uh, in bridges also you can you can uh, see the touch of cultural value by looking at the tibetan flags you must have seen the tibetan flags will col- colorful flag these are known as very auspicious when you start your journey so that is there there are far far sighted bamboo trees also but overall if you will see it, it's a good major forest section and first day after the first day first day itself you will feel like okay now i have trekked too much because your fitness level should be at your at your peak i would say for doing goe chala and then from you go there to <clears throat> zongri wait uh, no not zongri you will go to Sach- from sachin to soka so soka is again one campsite which is quite open you can see a uh, mount pandim and other other peaks from there there is a monastery also again cultural value there is a pond also small pond there are monasteries small monasteries there are a uh, few huts so there is a proper culture we you talk about camping but in uh, sikkim side a little bit of nepali side you can see the homestay culture where you are not camping but staying in a small huts uh, mm-hmm. eating the local food so i think this these one aspect for the first two days that catches catches your attention a lot because you you are trekking in a place where you are trekking as well as uh, living the life they are living very closely very closely seeing how they talk everything is there then the third day starts which which is i would say one of the favorite day day of mine also because when you walk uh, you are again in a forest section of rhododendron these are buras buras uh, you must have seen that red red flower so rhododendron tree section when you go from there there is a proper paved path made by wooden wooden logs so when you walk from there it, it feels like so magical like you are entering into some some particular uh, wonderland because the terrain changes once you enter enter from there and you enter in the zongri camps and zongri campsite is at 13000 feet 
most of the treks himalayan treks in uttarakhand if you see the highest point will be 12000 12500 feet but mm-hmm. here one of the camp site itself is at 13500 13700 feet so that's why one of the day we take as an acclimatization day like when you reach to zongri zongri camp site next day is your acclimatization day where practically you are not trekking you are just going to one hill top uh, just to gain some height and then come back Uh, just like a small summit you know that is that is a particular day where you you acclimatize because you have long days ahead and then you reach one campsite which is thansing the campsite wise thansing is is the best i would say reason being uh, there are men there are very less treks in our country uh, where you are camping on the base of any mountain see when when you see any mountain you can always uh, see the tip of it or maybe one third one half of the mountain but looking at the mountain from top to bottom to to its base it's very difficult and that too if you are able to camp there it it's quite rare but here in campsite when uh, the summit campsite from where you go, go, go for the summit there is a thansing thansing campsite so waha se you can see proper mount panding and it is also special because it is known as uh, the feet of buddha sleeping buddha so sleeping buddha is actually a mountain range uh, kanchenjunga is also part of it Uh, if you if someone looks at that you will be seeing a particular person is sleeping so wo pura range dikhta hai sandakfu ek trek hai west bengal mein wahan se next day you move to the summit which is goichala view point 1 there are a lot of view points but due to the glacier and due to uh, safety aspect the view point 2 and 3 is not accessible by the normal route so we go till the view point 1 which is at around 15100 feet so the route itself is so challenging you will not believe we start the trek by 12:30 am on this trek in goichala my god yes yes <laughs> and the day is so long it's 18 kilometers going and coming back so by the time you come back it's it's lunch time you leave at 12:30 and it it's it's like you you keep on walking sometimes though at night it gets little bit scary reason being you have so much of big peaks in front of you that is glittering in the night sky oh my goodness it it must be a glittering in the amazing amazing view yes yes totally amazing means uh, i cannot even describe when you are there you it, it feels like, like maybe you are on moon because uh, you are walking on the snow it is covered in glacier but throughout the year uh, even if you are going through april you are walking on the snow you are going in october you are walking on snow for that particular patch of going to goichala view point 1 so while you are looking at it, it feels like at 3 am 2 am it feels so majestic that maybe you have died you are in paradise and something something is happening there there is no no voice utter silence and when you reach there obviously you you have left quite early it means we were we are we are always aiming for the sunrise and when you reach there the sun falls on i am having goosebumps right now the sun falls on kanchenjunga and the entire place is like lit in orange orange color and when you are standing there you are struggling because your feet are numb your hands are hurting it means you are practically struggling but you are looking at that and that is something magical i have not seen something magical than that it means you can actually feel the reward of it you you have actually put the effort and you have, you are getting that reward so that is something very special from for goichala and one of the major thing which makes it much more difficult uh, many of the treks you might have seen Uh, after completing the summit to come to base camp it's not very difficult uh, that's a easy day the summit day is ho gaya aaram se camp site mein aaram karke next day you you can come back to base camp very easily but here after that 18 km of <laughs> extremely tiring summit you come back and you have two days to come back to base camp which is 13 km each oh man <laughs> so this is something very challenging but it it pushes me also as a as a trek leader and the trekkers who also come they they are in their in their prime fitness i would say so it it gets very very good because you have eight days also you gel a lot a lot better with the people you form great bonds with eight eight day you are living on that condition acclimatization day so it it it's, it gets very emotional when you come back by the experience by the people everything i think that is what makes uh, goichala the most favorite trek for me that is that is really amazing the way you were describing it i could visualize the whole scenario and just listening to this felt so good i'm sure being there would be 
one hell of experience yes yes and you should do that trek actually yeah i i was actually planning to do it but uh, some things came up maybe next year you have done treks in nepal as well right yes i have led one trek in nepal which is khopra ridge mhm is that is that mountain range different or it's the same mountain range that that we have in india or how different is the terrain out there mm, so i would say the trekking in nepal is entirely different than trekking in india because the culture itself is very very different a lot of uh, westerners europeans they come on a trek and for them uh, it is it is very uh, convenient to stay in the home stays rather than in the camps so most of the places terrain wise i would say it is it is not that raw means a lot of times you will uh, find a paved path even if you uh, if you if you've heard about the famous treks ebc everest base camp abc annapurna base camp or circuit they mm-hmm. they are commercialized in such a way that when you are trekking you are in the wilderness but it's a dedicated path and you are staying in the home stays or hotels even i remember the first camp site uh, when i reached there there was a proper bed and there was a wifi there <laughs> there was a particular hot water section there was hot water bags for us hot water for drinking so everything was sorted even we were served uh, when when we trek with india hikes when we trek in normal outdoors normal treks in uttarakhand uh, we carry our own cutlery also and we wash it also and the food is also very basic very healthy very tasty but here you you have a proper dining dining system proper plates are there there is a proper buffet system the variety is also very different you get pizza also uh, you <laughs> <Okay>. get uh, <laughs> everything is there so more most of the things are i think uh, to to attract or attract the tourism uh, or attract and grow the tourism from the westerners because majority of the thing uh, which nepal is striving i feel is from the tourism our uh, mount everest is also there so it attracts a lot of lot of them now in terms of this i would say uh, trekking in nepal is very different terrain wise uh, terrain wise also it is different but most of the things are there which you can find in uh, indian trekking okay this is a interesting insight i i didn't know that they have so many facilities in nepal during a trek rahul you told me uh, all these beautiful experiences uh, on your treks experiences in nepal but going back to when you found your why now you have your why that why you want to become a trek leader but actually getting into the shoes of trek leader how was that what was your first trek leading experience that that's again a very <laughs> very good question i would say uh, before answering that i would like to go back before before joining india hikes uh, see i have i have done a lot of a uh, treks with india hikes four treks with india hikes so i i knew that uh, what a trek leader does and how he is making sure the experience is enhanced by his presence but i was always intimidated by the by the process of it the reason being i cannot imagine i come from a place where i have always uh, shied away from talking in front of so many people i have shied away from uh, speaking publicly even uh, reciting some poems in school was a very cumbersome task for me and being an introvert person it, it was very difficult to talk to uh, a large mass of people one on one it is good i was able to do that but large mass was not good even while i was i was uh, finding my why and after i found my why uh, i was thinking okay now it is sorted but uh, how can i talk in front of 20 people while they are looking at me in a briefing or maybe while they are standing in front of me will they listen to me uh, will they like me will they take my word seriously or not like these are the things which were making me anxious that how will it all go after joining india hikes also going through the training it obviously made me feel a lot of lot more confident about leading the treks we we undergo 3 months of training here <laughs> after uh, all those training before my first trek which i was leading i was very nervous i remember before that for two two straight days i was not able to sleep because the idea of seeing a lot of people leading them to uncertain terrain of himalayas 
माय फर्स्ट ट्रैक वाज हमटा पास ट्रैक इट्स इन हिमाचल प्रदेश इट स्टार्ट्स फ्रॉम मनाली ऑन व्हेन द फर्स्ट टीम केम आई रिमेंबर आई वाज जस्ट शिवरिंग लुकिंग एट द पीपल 20 पीपल सिटिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी एंड लुकिंग एट मी व्हाइल आई आई वाज अबाउट टू स्पीक समथिंग अबाउट दैट एंड आई मेड अ ब्लंडर इन माय फर्स्ट फर्स्ट ब्रीफिंग ओनली I was about to tell about Hamda Pass because that that was the trek we were doing. But I ended up speaking about Brigu Lake, which again starts from Manali only. I oh was showing God. the map and I I was <laughs> I was telling them about Brigu Lake. I I just realized okay it, I I'm doing something wrong. And then I I took it in such a way that okay I was seeing your attention that are you attentive or not? No one pointed out that I was doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I used my presence of mind, and from there it took. But, but on the on the way, when when I started the trek, the the thing started to flow. Major major thing which which helped me. Ah, uh, one of my senior told me, see, this is your first trek. Ah, uh, and many of the things you you are going to do the first time. So don't just think what you are going to do incorrectly. The main major apprehension was what if someone asks me something and I am not able to answer. What if ah uh, someone. Uh, does something which I don't have any answer uh, for as a response, or I am doing the first time. I don't know what to talk, what to say about this. So all of those things are there. I am going to make mistakes. So the fir- first thing which which I should do or I wanted to do was going in this trek as a first first trek, not as a trek leader, but as, but as a trekker. Mm-hmm. So this helped me clear my mind that I am the part of the team. It's not that I am a leader, so I have to just instruct everyone. I have to make 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 everyone uh, see that I am a boss and I am controlling everyone. It it was not the idea. Idea was to mingle with them in such a way where I am forming a team of trekkers, and then wherever is required in decision making or maybe safety, I am pitching in and I am providing my insights. So that helped me a lot. I think it is also important to not let the trekkers know that it's your first trek as leader. because it would be so scary for them if you if they are if they know that you it oh it's it's his first trek and if it is the first trek of a trekker as well at the same time they will be so scared and start to panic if something goes wrong yes that 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 was one of the major thought because which uh, led to the sleepless nights i had ki what if they know that i am i am the first i this is my first trek and i'm doing it so this was all the internal thoughts which i thought ki let me go as a trekker i am going to command and everything i am going to do but for myself i am going as a trekker so that made the process very very easy for me on camp sites also i was able to uh, gel equally better with everyone i was able to talk was once i get, got into that zone it was like ki now now they are the people i know see if you are uh, speaking in front of maybe known persons uh, there are four people who are sitting in front of you they are your friends so you will not hesitate to speak a lot of things but if they are unknown you will obviously have apprehensions ki what if they think uh, something different about me what if they think this is wrong but after getting along with them knowing them it was easy to address them to talk to them because i was in that position of being trekking so it started flowing so i think that took off and i when when i told them i, I this is also my first trek as a trek leader uh, while debriefing they were like shocked oh seriously <laughs> we did not felt like that and i think that was the great compliment which i took uh, mm-hmm. from that time he it did not even felt like this this was your first trek as a trek leader that was really great i think this is one trek which i all which i will always remember as a first trek it was on, already special but the the things i went through i feel very it was very good mhm mm-hmm. and i think hamta pass is also somewhat challenging from your leading your first trek at hamta pass to cleaning up the hamta pass i read that you were part of the team which you went for two days in on the trail of hamta pass and you brought down i think somewhat 400 kg of waste which is yes a lot of waste i think hamta pass is a trail because it's a very famous trek in manali i have read that it has daily 300 trekkers during the season or so, i i don't remember the number you can better tell that but the mm-hmm. amount of waste that gets produced and you were a part of cleaning that so how was that experience and how do you feel when you see waste on the trails and look at that part of the the other side of uh, other side of trekking i would say this particular uh, trek with the objective of collecting the waste i feel uh, i have very mixed feeling for that 
uh, at the first place i feel very privileged that i was part of such initiative at that time but at the same time i feel very uh, very sad that i was part of it and we had to pick up so many ways so it was uh, not 400 it was around 535 535 540 kgs and the major idea which we went through was again like you said the hamta pass is actually very famous trail and it is during monsoon season so many of the people come on that trek more than 300 even numbers i, I would not uh, be able to put a proper number in that because it keeps on changing but 300, it is more than 300 more than 300 to 500 i would say we have seen that impact like how people come and the irresponsible trekking i would say uh, one is you are consuming uh, one, one is your littering particular area by consuming packaged food or just throwing it that is that that is that itself was there but majority of of the thing which we have seen the people are consuming at the rapid pace means there are a lot of dhaba and it it did not felt like you are in a particular trek it felt like it's it's a carnival going on and no one is taking care of anything and one of the major problem which we saw the, the consumption was there consumption and littering was there and it was a lot of lot like a carnival which is going on the rappers were uh, here and there and, and all sort of not only rappers uh, you can say as as dirty as the sanitary napkins or maybe the tissue rolls which has been used for the human waste the, everything was there and one thing which made it worse was the monsoon season it means nothing can be recovered properly it is all wet uh, it is all soiled and you have to put extra effort many a times the trekkers who go they also are very much uh, resistance toward that particular picking up the waste but anyhow we as a as a team as a prop, normal trekking team trek lead, uh, the trekkers trek leaders uh, they particularly went for the for the trek as a, as a normal routine they were able to clear out the waste from the on, from the trail but one of the major problem which we saw was uh, even though on the trail it was uh, it was uh, apparently clean that if i am going through this particular cam campsite from this trail uh, there are no, no major waste because obviously our teams are going from there and they are continuously picking up the waste taking it in their eco bag and then going forward but one major problem was that people started to put waste inside the rocks or <laughs> outside the trail so that it cannot be identified or maybe this is this is the way where they are, they do not want to show that they are the part of the problem of littering the place so mm. our major objective first of all was to clean hamta pass as much as much possible because once the season ends from the hamta pass or any of the trek in himachal you can say the snow starts to come up and till next year which is more than 10 months you cannot actually come back and retrieve the waste which was there since last year that that part becomes the part of the soil and then th this is gone then you have to put extra effort to uh, bring it out so our idea was before the season ends we want to clean as much as waste and our idea was if we start going from the trail obviously we are not going to go uh, go in the two days because here we have to put an effort from the areas to areas so we identified few hot spots that this particular campsite has a hot spot uh, where maybe dhaba walas or particular type of uh, trekkers or irresponsible tourists they come and they might dispose this so our idea was to attack the hotspots and hotspots were majorly below the boulder section or maybe near the river or a place where people sit but they don't go for trek suppose a, a place where uh, the river is nearby and you want to just sip a cup of tea there sitting there having fun so those are the places which we chose and through that the deliberate effort within two days we were able to collect 535 kgs of waste we recorded the video also which is in youtube i think we reflected on also on also this key uh, what does it make us make us feel and this, this majorly see, we did it and uh, we were very proud of it but majority of the things were there ki, uh, somewhere we are also part of the problem uh, it's not that we have picked the waste that we are 100% uh, not consuming packaged food we are also part of that many of the things you are unwillingly or indirectly consume you cannot say suppose you say um, you wash your clothes you take self excel now that that comes into package even if you're not consuming packaged food you are consuming packaged material in some sort or other so you are also part of the problem so it made us sad that at least we are aware but people are not even aware about 
what harm they are creating and this has this has obviously resulted in a lot of climatic change you can see the snowfall is not happening in a lot of treks uh, people come by this time december january to enjoy a winter trek but they are not getting that flavor of winter trek there is no snow so these are the impacts which we saw and we we just took it in our way that how what we can do because ultimately it it lies on our action it is limited to our actions only so agar koi let's say ye sun raha hai ya fir mere liye agar i am going on a trek not not mm-hmm. necessarily in the himalayas i go on any of the nearby mountains what would the one thing that i can i can change about myself my habits of trekking so that i make sure that i'm not producing i'm not, at least i'm not producing the waste what what do you think ki aisa kaun sa ek cheez hoga that i can do see they, this is this is a simple question which you can ask from yourself whenever you are going on trek because see you have accessibility of a lot of dhabas on the way and this this lies on your your conscious decision whether you want to consume a packet of maggi or packet of chips or you want to have some local food or you want to have something which does not uh, come into a packaged food so you can only ask yourself uh, this is particularly my need or my want and another thing which they can think about obviously a lot of uh, consciousness a lot of awareness is awareness is generated among the trekkers uh, i i can for sure tell there are a bunch of people who do not litter first thing is you are uh, consuming something some packaged food and you are throwing it so i am very much sure that uh, there are a lot of civilized people who come on trek there are there is a lot of awareness to not do this but where we are lacking is not the con- not the littering but the consumption see mm. if you are consuming if you are not littering that is very good but if you are consuming at the same time suppose you are having chips and you are telling ki i am going to take it back to the city so i am not littering though maybe there is no impact in that so what what harm i am doing but if you look at the larger picture this is not just limited to the mountains we tell it because the outlet is not here the proper facility is not here but if you look at the cities there is also a end there is a end where they are ending in the landfill Mm. there there is no proper system i would say there is a system but there is no proper system everywhere so you are part of being generation of that waste mm. so if you can reduce that if you can ask that can i just restrict that generation littering i am not doing that is okay but if i can be part of not generating that waste in first place that can help so agar main simple words mein kahu to agar main kisi chote hike pe jata hu aur wahan एक बंदा कोई भी चिप्स बेच रहा है एंड अनदर पर्सन इज सेलिंग ककड़ी क्यूकम्बर और बटर मिल्क देन आई शुड गेट बटर मिल्क एंड क्यूकम्बर रादर देन टेकिंग अ पैकेट ऑफ चिप्स यस ऑन टॉप ऑफ दैट आल्सो यू कैन यू कैन कैरी सम स्नैक्स विद योरसेल्फ फ्रॉम द होम मेड आई थिंक दैट दैट विल आल्सो हेल्प बिकॉज़ यू माइट फील हंग्री ऑन द वे यू माइट नॉट बी Uh, able to reach till dhaba and once you reach there you might get a super urge ki nahi shayad se kakdi mere ko nahi khana mere ko to khana wahi hai ye bhi ho sakta hai so mm-hmm. the snacks also helps mm-hmm. these are the small things but obviously this is a this is a journey and it will require more effort at first it is not going to come very deliberately because you you will see only you are doing this or there are two three people who are doing it there are bunch of people who around you who are not doing it so you will get disheartened also very early Mm-hmm. I'm sure I will try to follow this, and those who listen to this podcast, they will also try to follow this. Lastly, mm-hmm. Rahul, what what is your future plan or the trek that you see? I want to do this. I mean, in every field of every career, you have some. If if you are you are say playing a sport, you want to play for India. Mm-hmm. You want to represent India. and something like that what what do you see that is there a particular trek is there a particular adventure that you you keep in your mind to keep yourself motivated particularly uh, there is i would not say there is a particular uh, set future plan for this particular thing mm, but one trek which i would i would love to do or which i am very much looking forward to is uh, this is warwan warwan valley it's in kashmir kargil kargil region of kashmir it's a, it's a difficult trek and it comes with 
like very very challenging terrain and even the particular track leader of the staff who goes they are very much under undergo a lot of training in terms of fitness in terms of safety in terms of all the overall aspect of running a track even guides and everyone so i would love to do that trek to test my ability i think that is one benchmark which i keep on working but this is something where i have to edit but then again it it's more as i'm leading more and more treks i feel this is not, not much more about the treks which i lead it is about the people i meet and the impact i can create going again going falling back to my why so i think i do not want to keep my eye away from this particular why but at the same time thriving for this particular trek because this is the larger picture where i want to move the impact which because the impact is not entirely dependent on the trek it in the trek obviously may, may plays the major part majority of the part but it should not be that this is a small trek or this is a just one day or two day trek so here i might not be able to create that impact so if that is able that i am able to do in a small trek or large trek big trek it's it's it serves the purpose of me being being working and being uh, in the outdoors i'm sure you will be able to create more and more impact as you go forward and also be able to do the trek which you have in your mind thank you so much for taking out the time it was great at least i you had an impact on me personally so that is also a great thing it was great talking to you maybe we can chat again i would love to hear more stories about the mountains and all your experiences thank you thank you so much ojas even i enjoyed uh, sharing all the perspectives and i feel the listeners who uh, they can also have a lot of takeaways from this and this is not just relating to uh, trekking this is relating to like how you can have some belief in uh, yourself on the on the go and how you can work towards um, something something better or something which is larger than you because at times when we feel uh, this this is all obviously my perspective uh, i am thinking from my perspective but i think uh, we should at least contribute towards something which is adding the value to others life because the many of the businesses which you operate startups which we which come they have this idea of uh, solving one problem or adding value or making things easy for others so i think uh, if as a human also we can see that sometimes we we rob ourselves from sharing or we rob rob ourselves from doing something for others because we think is it, it is taking away things from ourselves but i feel uh, there is one one thing which which i have recently learned you grow yourself by growing others so by contributing towards other you also are contributing towards yourself so i feel uh, i wish you all the best for also because you are helping uh, you are helping us grow or helping your listeners grow it will in return help you to grow Oh, all the best to us thank you thank you so much you can follow rahul on instagram his profile is full of stories and beautiful pictures from the mountains the link is in the description thanks for joining us on himalayan diaries from unboxing stories i'm your host ojas together with shivam hasurkar we are the creators of unboxing stories remember Every step in the mountains tells a story and we are here to bring them to you. If you are inspired to start your own trekking adventure, please remember that these are not just leisure activities but true adventure sports. It's crucial to learn, prepare and take all necessary safety measures before embarking on your journey. Your safety is as important as your adventure. If you have enjoyed this episode, do share it with your friends and family. Please make sure to follow us and leave a review on Spotify, Apple Podcast or wherever you get your podcast. Tune in next time as we continue to unbox more stories from the Himalayan diaries. Until then, keep moving forward. 